the work of the regulatory room. And uh, hopefully we can have a discussion about uh, what the room should be doing um, and what you think of the roadmap that we're using. Um, so I hope we will have some, some questions and some interaction. Um, I, uh, before we go too far, I think uh, Sheila needs to say the, the standard introduction. Thank you, Nick. Um, hello and welcome to this Building Smart Room session, uh, which is part of the Building Smart International Summit, Rome 2023. Thank you for joining. Um, my name is Sheila Krylum, and I will be your moderator today. Today's session is titled In Introduction Roadmap Open House. Our speaker for this, speakers for this session are Nicholas Nisbet, who is Director at AEC3 Limited and Vice Chair of Building Smart UK and Ireland. And we also have Misaki Muto, who is Chief Researcher at Building Research Institute Japan. Um, this schedule, sorry, this, this session is scheduled to last for 90 minutes with time for questions at the end. Um, the session is being recorded and will be made available in the replay section of the event as soon as possible. Before I hand over to our speakers, I would like to remind you that this is a hybrid event. For the online ad attendees, your microphones will remain muted for the duration of the session. If you wish to ask a question, please just use the chat box in the panel below. Um, for those in the room, please try to keep the background noise to a minimum and raise your hand if you wish to make a comment or ask a question. I would like to bring your attention that Building Smart is committed to ensuring that participation in the development of standards is unrestricted and the process for their adoption is transparent and standards that are developed do not favour any particular provider and are open, non-binding and accessible to all. Please take note of, the, uh, of our antitrust code of conduct, which is successfully on the screen. And um, on that note, I'll hand over to Nick. Um, so we, we have a, um, an agenda, um, but uh, some of you will be aware that uh, last night was the um, uh, summit dinner. And at the summit dinner, um, some uh, fellowships were awarded and, and fellowships are awarded to people who have contributed um, to the Building Smart community over a long period of time um, and with uh, dedication and uh, I would ask you to congratulate my colleague Masaki Mutu who's sitting next to me uh, on becoming a fellow and then he will present uh, some, an update from what is happening in Japan. Uh, and then we'll talk about the regulatory room uh, thereafter. So let's welcome him. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Masaki Muto from uh, Big Smart Japan Chapters. Uh, I engage at uh, uh, Beijing Research Institute Japan, and I'm working at working on uh, uh, beam building uh, uh, confirmation uh, almost 20 years. And now, uh, a Japanese uh, government decide uh, uh, beam uh, 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 doing the beam uh, building. Uh, uh, such uh, confirmation in in two years. It just it started at uh, two years late uh, after, and before uh, the the five year in, in the five five years is a uh, normally used uh, as a beam uh, building uh, confirmation. So I'd like to talking about uh, these situations, and uh, uh, I go to uh, some investigation tours in the last month. Uh, so I, I met Nick and uh, Tommy and so on. So uh, some international standards and nationalization situation in the world, world, world. The, I, I think about that situation, uh, conclusion, I'm talking about that. Okay, uh, this right uh, titled uh, the latest beam related measures on MRIT Japan. Next, please. Ah, ah sorry. <laughs> it's a high tech. Yeah. <laughs> and today's agenda is shown this right. So the first one, the research and development on beam in Japan. And the secondary, 
uh, it's a promotion on BIM in Japanese uh, government. And uh, the last uh, issue is the personal views on the measures. So uh, let's talk about uh, research and development on BIM in Japan. Uh, slide three, <laughs> the slide is uh, uh, completely showing the, the uh, left side is uh, some cut down. Uh, it's okay. Ah, okay. Uh, so uh, this is a uh, 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 gun chart. Is a Japanese beam uh, research and development in Japan almost uh, 20, 20, uh, sorry, uh, 20 years. So the BRI means uh, my uh, institute, uh, Building Research Institute. Uh, BRI uh, starting the beam researching at uh, 2009. Uh, this year is a uh, the first year of the BIM in Japan. It's a very uh, popular, popularized in Japanese, the BIM word in uh, 2009. Now we start at the same uh, time, uh, we start a uh, research in the BIM. And uh, now, uh, now it's uh, ongoing to uh, uh, fund fundamental research and developing on BIM now. And uh, the PRISM and BRIDGE, or SIP, is uh, a government founded a uh, very huge uh, amount budget is uh, consumed uh, some researching programs. Uh, PRISM is uh, the jargon, is uh, public and private research and development investment strategic expansion program mu <laughs> it's a very uh, stinky uh, jargon but prism is a very huge uh, uh, r&d uh, programs and also bridge is uh, 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 the secondary uh, prism programs names it's a slightly long i, I don't show <laughs> please read uh, on yourself so we we treat uh, beam uh, uh, research and development is starting at uh, 2018 and now uh, we finished uh, the uh, Kuni One program in, in the, during five years. Our next stage, the Kuni Q or SIP program is just starting, but now uh, it's a, now just uh, uh, TBC status. Uh, we want to try to uh, this program, but uh, it's not de de deciding now. So uh, it is a uh, uh, slide is uh, uh, connecting Kuni One and Kuni Q programs. So we uh, conduct uh, Kuni One program. It is a uh, 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 <coughs> uh, development ele element elemental technologies uh, to uh, connecting the beam data and the whole uh, project stages. Uh, in the start at the Kuni one, uh, we don't have uh, uh, beam object libraries and uh, doesn't start uh, beam uh, building confirmation. And also the CDEs is not exist at that time. So we have to try to make uh, these uh, technologies uh, in Kuni one and uh, almost finished uh, in this time. The Kuni Q is uh, enhanced uh, this uh, uh, researching. So it's a real connecting uh, situation making the, on, in the Kuni 9, uh, Kuni Q, Kuni 9. So we, we try to uh, making uh, some rules, also management uh, beam data, so the whole uh, stage of uh, project and uh, the, at the use that. And, and uh, the data is uh, uh, very socialized, so some uh, social data is combined to the last time. And also, the uh, uh, development, the use case, at, uh, especially the uh, operator and maintenance stages, is conducting uh, as Kuni 9. And also, uh, developed some 
uh, edge technologies, something like the uh, internet and uh, uh, information technology, uh, information and communication technologies in the satellites, uh, some X XR technology and so on. So we try to develop in uh, CUNYQ the TAM3. Uh, the next, next one, uh, the promotion beam. Uh, this is the uh, uh, latest uh, um, MRT measure uh, indicate the one slide in Japanese. So this slide uh, indicates uh, two points. Uh, the first point is uh, a blue uh, one, uh, 2020 financial year's budget in the uh, 300 million N is prepared. It is uh, a very uh, fundamental uh, uh, measures. In, in three years, uh, we uh, spent uh, 300 million yen per each year. So we try to uh, three topics, such as uh, improvement of the uh, beam uh, permit review. review. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a difficult uh, Describing it's 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 the same as uh, beam uh, building beam confirmation means, and the second thesis is uh, improvement of the data linkage uh, environment between the design, the construction, and maintenance and management. Uh, it's it's very connected to uh, the CUNYQ project and so on. And finally, the promotion the use in the maintenance and operation phases. It's, it's also connecting the, our CUNYQ's uh, uh, second team. And that one is a uh, more huge uh, budget it's prepared. It uh, indicates the uh, 2022 uh, financial year's supplementary budget. It's prepared uh, 8,000 million yen. It's a very huge. It's that is uh, uh, in this slide described as support of building project in which small and medium sized enterprise utilize beam. Uh, it's spent for uh, design cost and construction cost. Uh, in the, if you using the beam, it's a, a supplemental uh, money is uh, 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 given for each project. It's a, a, a huge number of the cases is, is uh, get the, uh, some support, support money. And uh, the uh, reviewing roadmap and uh, destruction of the beam R&D system is now conducted. So we have a uh, 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 beam roadmap in uh, five years ago. Uh, did, at the starting as a beam round table in Japan, is making the first version uh, beam roadmap. In then now, so we it, the uh, roadmap is uh, devised for uh, uh, connecting such uh, emirated measures. The first one is uh, uh, very indicated the time to start a beam uh, building confirmation. The target year is as shown the slide, the 2035, uh, the beam building confirmation is trial is start. It's uh, uh, same says IOC based uh, conducting. It's uh, very clearly uh, indicated by MRIT. It is almost uh, beam uh, IFC mandate, I think. Uh, it's a very, very big change in Japanese measures. And also the two, 2027 is uh, beam building confirmation is very normally spread it is uh, the target, uh, target years. This, this uh, indicate by uh, beam roadmap. And uh, the in, in line with uh, at, at, 
above, a necessary standard will be uh, developed. So we don't have a standard for utilized beam now, such, such as uh, some uh, uh, beam library and, and uh, pr processing the beam data. It is, it is uh, not, uh, we don't have a standard for in that issue. So we make uh, the stand, new standards in this uh, roadmap. And third one is uh, into, introduce a task, task force type development organization to realize uh, the, this roadmap. So that uh, roadmap indicates that two task force is a uh, settlement. The first one is uh, uh, building, uh, beam building confirmation task force. It, 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 that task force uh, leading me. Uh, it's a try, it's a very huge uh, work it on my shoulders but uh, we 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 have to uh, uh done in, uh, in the 2035 and the second task uh, task force is uh, uh making a standard task force it is uh led by uh our building smart japan colleagues is uh conducted it that plan So this slide is a uh, uh, Japanese style beam, uh, uh, building beam confirmations. So it's two types indicate in this slide. So 2035, we, we have to start the beam, uh, building beam uh, confirmation. It's a uh, 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 left side uh, type beam, uh, beam confirmation, it names uh, beam drawing review. Why, why uh, in, show the drawing mean? So in this uh, beam drawing uh, reviews, it is uh, uh, not big change in the, uh, these processes. Uh, only uh, IOC data is using some evidence for uh, uh, consistencies documents, but uh, the, the IOC data is uh, uh, very important to, uh, point. It is, uh, we want, we try to make uh, some data as it contains uh, the evidence data. So it is connected to the second stages, the beam data uh, reviews. It's just starting uh, uh, using beam uh, during uh, reviews. So it's very uh, normally used uh, this, this way. So it's, uh, it's introduced uh, very uh, smoothly to uh, uh, beam data uh, reviews, is, I, I think. So this stage is uh, the AME rating I, I conducted, AME meanings is a, uh, uh, what is a AME? Uh, advanced metrics uh, evaluation, me? Tommy, <laughs> it is a correct name, so I, 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 I forgot uh, in this, one. but uh, this is a regular term uh, uh, define the, some rating systems. It is mean uh, this uh, beam during review, the M rating is uh, open beam uh, is level two, uh, level three. So it's meaning that IOC data is using. And X3, Y1, uh, Z3 meaning it is a X3 is a implement, uh, implementing. Y1 is a low hanging fruits and Z3 is a, something like that. So, uh, Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> but but a very very high high level uh, uh, rating, I think. And uh, the it is a final goal. The beam data review is uh, the using the uh, IOC data is uh, automatic code checking, and some remains um, using uh, uh, drawing uh, rev drawing review, but uh, we changing to uh, the range is uh, enhanced. Uh, IOC data is uh, model checking, and, and 
uh, ultimate goal is uh, no documents, just only using IFT data. Ah, this slide shows that that means uh, AM rating. So, uh, okay. So, just finally, uh, it's my point of view of this mission. Uh, the, it, uh, three points is the indicate in this, right? The promotion beam is major is positioned in the government strategies. Our government strategies has uh, uh, the goal output of the measures to realize society 5.0. Society 5.0 is a making a Japanese a unique word. It is a, a data driven uh, uh, society is making. So it is uh, uh, resolves as many uh, issues or problems is uh, the society 5.0. 5, 5 it is uh, indicates a government strategy in Japan. So, but I think this is a difficult to visualize. So we didn't know, we didn't image the society 5.0. It is not exist now. It's a very difficult uh, consideration. Why is the society 5.0? Is this uh, really uh, it's a real it, need? It is very difficult to know. Uh, comparing the UK or EU's changing the beam promotion is very, very uh, easy understanding. It's connecting to uh, the first stage. Uh, it's it's indicate uh, improvement on productivity. Uh, as you know, uh, 2011, the UK construction strategy is uh, shown. It's indicates uh, is a. Uh, 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 changing the uh, construction sector's work for improvement productivity by using IT technologies. Uh, this uh, is uh, this report supported uh, uh, UK's uh, past 11-192, and also uh, the next year's UK's uh, done uh, beam mandate. So the. EU follow up the UK's success and 2014 EU procurement directive is uh, shown. And then the 2018 ISO 19650 is uh, published. It is uh, uh, first uh, phases uh, the beam promotion. And now this is change to actions. It's changed to the Green Deal. So Nick ha uh, has uh, uh, where is the uh, SDGs uh, birch? It is a very, very easy understanding to using BIM. And uh, some country I investigated uh, the last month, uh, such as uh, Finland or Norway, the UK is also. So each country is make an action plan to each country, so such like uh, achieve the uh, next stage BIM. Uh, uh, based on a uh, green deal. It is a uh, utilized beam for the automatic, something like uh, product data template and very unique uh, ideas is, is very occurred by in these, uh, the measures. So, so what need to promote, promote BIM in my country? So it's a personal opinion. It is a simple way, simple thing. So it, it uh, change the uh, measure, the object, n not uh, society 5.0. Uh, we, we choose more easy understanding such like the Green Deal. It's that my uh, conclusion. Thank you very much.
Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think it's uh, uh, an exciting time. Uh, more and more countries um, are appreciating the opportunities of Open BIM. Uh, there are other news items that are being talked about uh, in the summit, uh, like the news from uh, Finland. Um, and I think uh, many countries realize that the opportunities around regulation um, and sustainability are the two, uh, the two ways government can influence the adoption of BIM uh, in it for its own right and for the efficiencies it brings. And so it's exciting to, to be in the regulatory room now. Um, I'd like to, to welcome everyone. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about uh, our ambitions. Um, we, we do see our role as uh, helping the industry working towards uh, automated code and requirements compliance. Uh, there is uh, regulatory uh, code compliance and there are client requirements. Um, and we need to make sure that Building Smart considers the requirement side of the industry as well as the solutions uh, side. And I think that's the, one of the jobs of the regulatory room. Uh, so I'll say a little more about the role um, and how we operate. Uh, and then I'd like to say a little bit more about um, uh, the roadmap uh, that we're following. Uh, so uh, let's uh, move along. Um, Many of you will be familiar with the, uh, the way Building Smart uh, operates uh, through rooms. Uh, this diagram uh, is just to emphasize that the room um, is, is on the left-hand side of this diagram. Um, the rooms are the forum for gathering industry needs um, and, and, as you've heard, uh, industry news as well. And we, then the room acts as a filter to organize those requirements and uh, we form working groups for particular projects. Uh, if we uh, feel the need for a project, uh, we make a standards proposal um, and that has to be approved by the standards committee. Um, and then our working groups uh, commence. Um, those projects will hopefully deliver um, either a, a draft document or a draft standard. Um, uh, which can then be adopted. Uh, and then it becomes part of a deployment to, to try and get those uh, standards and those ideas out into, uh, into use. Um, so we are very much the, um, the, 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 the community facing, the industry facing uh, panel. And uh, we hope that uh, uh, within the limits of what uh, uh, people can volunteer and what they can do, uh, that we are uh, advancing the cause of uh, uh, or the, the issues around regulatory uh, uh, open BIM. Uh, I need to say a very big thank you. Um, uh, this year, the steering committee doubled in size. Um, and uh, we now have a, a brilliant team um, who are um, discussing and challenging. Um, I can make exceptions. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, so I think our profile is increasing, which is important um, uh, because, uh, as I say, um, the uh, demand side of the industry isn't always well represented in Building Smart and, and so on. Um, and uh, in particular, I need to thank uh, Franco Coyne and Tommy Hintonen uh, for leading our current work groups. Um, uh, and uh, uh, we'll hear a little bit more about that today. And uh, those of you who join the, uh, the next session will uh, hear more about the uh, Tommy Hennens and, uh, and the Regulatory Information Requirements Project. And tomorrow we will discuss uh, the, the uh, guidance document for regulators. So um, a big thank you to the subcommittee. <laughs> Sorry, steering committee. Um, 
And uh, um, sorry, on my screen here, she's been cut off to one side, but I also want to thank Sheila for representing the Building Smart uh, Management Office and uh, keeping us well organized when uh, we're not always. Um, so uh, thank you to her too. Okay, um, a little about our objectives. Um, I think uh, our vision is about automated regulatory processes. Um, but, uh, um, but our strategy is to work out what the gradual change is for the industry um, from the manual, maybe paper, maybe PDF-based systems, um, uh, up to an automated system um, and safeguarding the, or uh, working to understand the legal perspective. Um, it is often difficult for, for countries to change. They have laws that embed paper or documents or signatures or uh, wax seals or all sorts of things. So um, we, we see a, a step transition from manual use of blueprints and manual um, uh, checks or to digital documents, um, uh, perhaps based on PDF uh, uh, and 3D models. Um, and then uh, eventually we will get to a stage where the IFC model is dominant um, and that people can start to automate maybe parts of their workflows. Um, but the ultimate uh, uh, aim, um, and uh, maybe there are lots of uh, um, cautions to say, but uh, we, we, we hope we can move towards uh, an automated uh, and integrated system. Uh, which, um, uh, why? because there's obviously the scope for efficiency, um, both for the industry to, to get the permits they need quickly, uh, efficiency uh, for the regulator to carry out uh, what many regulators see as being uh, um, a distraction from being on site and, and, and checking excavations as they happen and that kind of thing. So we, obviously there's a question of efficiency. Um, I think we're also looking for uh, accuracy. Um, there is uh, enough anecdotal evidence that not every regulatory system is thorough. Um, I always uh, tell the story of uh, uh, a supermarket chain in the USA that uh, developed an ideal store or a new preferred store plan and they asked uh, seven different uh, jurisdictions to check the plans um, for compliance and uh, all seven spotted different mistakes but none of them spotted that the fire escapes didn't go anywhere. Um, now, um, is that typical? I hope not. Does it happen sometimes? I'm afraid uh, it, it, it does. Um, we also know that uh, all industries, including the regulatory organizations, are under pressure from recruitment and staffing. Um, I don't think it's different from any other industry or any uh, section of the industry. Um, but automation has got to, um, got to has, has to fulfill a role um, uh, to, to bridge that gap, that manpower gap that I think uh, most economies are, are noticing. Uh, so we have our vision and we have our strategy and we have a, a stepwise um, approach um, which uh, helps us uh, think about it. Uh, and indeed, this diagram, which illustrates that stepwise approach, um, was originally composed uh, by Masaki Mutu uh, long before I joined the regulatory room. So um, we could give her another applause for this diagram, which I think has inspired us all. <laughs> um, yes, so I, I think there's a, uh, we, 
uh, it's unlikely that any um, any particular country or jurisdiction will go straight to full automation. Uh, we know uh, that the experiment was tried in uh, Singapore. Uh, we know that there have been uh, 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 work on individual clauses and aspects since. Um, but I think in, in most countries, uh, the way uh, will be stepwise, um, uh, as Masaki showed for Japan, uh, and um, we, we, you know, we need to bring both the regulatory community and the design and engineering community, uh, client bodies, uh, along the journey with us. Um, one of the things that has, uh, is uh, an obstacle uh, to our discussions is that um, every country has names for the steps in the process, uh, and they're different. And uh, in some countries, um, these uh, steps are joined together and just called uh, permitting. Uh, in other countries, it's broken out into stages. Um, so we try to have a, a common language of saying that uh, there is often a step um, after concept uh, design uh, to, to think of uh, concept approval, which may be to do with town planning and zoning. It may be to do with um, uh, land use controls and so on. Um, and then there is a more detailed technical design process, and then there's often a step for technical approval. Um, the, on the completion of construction, there may be a, um, uh, an approval of that uh, construction work. Uh, and then after handover, uh, many countries have uh, permitting to, sorry, to, to permit the use uh, or the occupancy of facilities. And um, a similar process happens with infrastructure. Um, they have different names, of course. So we produce this diagram to say, to try and help us talk uh, about the process and to understand the steps. Um, knowing that every uh, country, uh, whether they um, talk about it in English or, or in other languages, um, we'll have different names for these processes, but this is our, our, our reference model uh, for what we're trying to do and what we're trying to talk about. We have uh, a roadmap, and uh, this is the uh, latest revision of our roadmap. And we've mapped out um, uh, three, uh, three uh, uh, stages, low-hanging fruits, the things that can be done soon and immediately, uh, some which depend on uh, the advanced use of BIM, and then long-term ambitions. But we've also broken it down uh, in terms of uh, the, um, the need to engage our community and uh, um, go out and talk to uh, the, the industry and the regulators in, in every way we can. And uh, as part of that, we have done surveys. As part of that, we, have, um, we hold open houses every six months. We will be online. Look out for us. We will uh, have a, um, a webinar um, to find our audience uh, and, and make sure that uh, what we're doing connects in the right ways with, with the community out there. Of course, we part of the roadmap is to think about what technology we need uh, based on the building smart uh, processes, but also thinking about uh, um, uh, 19650 and uh, the, the way that collaborative uh, working is evolving. Uh, we have uh, um, details on implementation. Uh, and then the last two uh, work streams of our roadmap are about evaluating and sustaining it, because we need to make sure that the messages we get out there um, are checked, um, are realistic, and continue to be relevant. So uh, we've, uh, we looked at this roadmap. We've um, 
uh, agreed it. Uh, hopefully we won't need to revise it for another few years because we hope it's robust. And uh, let me just go to, oh, sorry, too much. Um, uh, but we've also plotted uh, on that uh, um, roadmap the actual projects that we can carry out and what we're doing um, to make sure that uh, uh, we take the opportunities as they come up. Um, uh, we ha I've already mentioned the two uh, live projects we've got going, guidance for regulators, uh, reaching out to uh, maybe the community that doesn't come to Building Smart um, uh, meetings, uh, but uh, or half of our audience, of course. Um, the last time I said this, uh, the arms shot up and I found that we had four or five regulators in the room. Um, and that was very encouraging. Um, we have the uh, regulatory information requirements project that is saying, can we look at processes across the, the world? Can we get people to say what the, the basic information that they need in the BIM model is? Um, we know that the regulations are different in every country, but actually they're all regulating similar things. They're regulating um, uh, fire, and access, they're regulating uh, structure and uh, energy. Um, and so we're looking to see if we can find a common set so that the Building Smart International standards uh, have the, the attributes and the relationships that, that, that people will need. Knowing full well that there will be extras for each individual country, um, as Tommy and I always say, not every country has building regulations affecting saunas. Um, so there will always be the specifics of, of different countries. Um, the other thing you can see on this roadmap is the, um, uh, the, the, the challenge that we were, uh, we were challenged to think about IFC-based CO2 calculation requirements for regulatory use. Um, that idea changed over the last six months and led to the discussion we had this morning uh, as to can we form a, a, a sustainability action group um, to bring other rooms together to, to get a message out to um, the, the wider industry uh, that, that open standards and open BIM are critical to the very idea of sustainability. So we have other projects that are not highlighted there, which we would like to do. Um, and of course, if we get more people, if we get more volunteers, if we get more um, enthusiasm, then we would like to tackle them as soon as possible. Uh, we have dates there when we imagine that we will be able to do them, but the sooner the better. Uh, so that's uh, our, our main work. Um, the slide I jumped over um, is to say that uh, uh, we have, uh, we do talk with other rooms. Uh, this particular example is uh, that the, build, the Building Smart Building Room has a project on fire safety engineering and occupant movement. Now, um, we, we discussed with them uh, what the scope of their project was and what the scope of our projects were. And we sort of sliced up the cake uh, to say that uh, um, simulation of fire safety uh, and the simulation of occupant movement was a, a, a building room uh, question. Uh, but the regulation of fire safety and, and occupants uh, is, is in our area. And, and similarly, um, the um, fire and structure regulation is, is within our scope. Um, but that's an ongoing conversation. Uh, and of course, in, in some countries, uh, simulation is an acceptable uh, solution uh, to the regulatory requirements. And so uh, some of those things that are being developed in the building room will, will come back into our domain in, in due course. Uh, the um, yes, as I say, uh, this morning we, we had a, a discussion about um, 
essentially, should, uh, should the individual rooms work on aspects of sustainability or co can we come together? And uh, we had a good number of people saying, yes, uh, we should form this action group uh, with a, a live uh, or a, a, a strong agenda to try and create uh, in a year, um, well, to achieve as much as we can in one year um, and then decide what to do next and so on. But to try and get a, a sustainability manifesto, uh, a Building Smart Sustainability Manifesto, of what we can contribute to um, this question and to the industry. And that will go ahead. And uh, um, I, yeah, I think it's... Uh, um, an important message that the regulatory room uh, can overlap with these uh, uh, these bigger, uh, sometimes bigger issues, sometimes they're regulatory, sometimes they are, uh, what can I say, ethical, um, and sometimes they're personal choice. Okay. Um, I'd like to, to um, just mention um, that uh, the, the next session uh, in this room will be uh, looking at the regulatory information requirements in, in more detail. Uh, we want to treat that as a, as a working session to make some progress on the use cases around that we needed to support um, and, and to find out if there are other countries uh, that would like to contribute to the, the catalogue uh, that we're uh, creating. Um, I'm pleased to say that some of you will be joining us for a, a dinner uh, this evening, uh, but only if you've registered. Um, uh, if you would like to join us, uh, please have a word with uh, uh, Sheila. Yep. Uh, uh, afterwards, there were a few spaces available, uh, he said, ever the salesman. Um, uh, and uh, I think that's a, um, it's it, part of the success and growth and enthusiasm for the regulatory room um, that we can uh, host a dinner and have difficulty finding a restaurant big enough. So that's uh, a measure of our uh, of success. Um, and tomorrow, um, the uh, two high, two things I'd like to highlight uh, at ten o'clock we will there'll be a talk. Um, led by Tomi um, uh, on the news that IFC is to become mandatory um, uh, for, for building permit documentation and archiving. Um, I think it's a, um, it's a story that, that uh, is echoing around the world, really, to say that uh, uh, a jurisdiction has uh, made this decision. Um, and is working out the details. Uh, and I think uh, it'll be an inspiration for many countries to follow. Um, and then uh, after lunch tomorrow, um, there will be a, a, a discussion of the progress on the work for guidance for regulators. So that's our... Sorry? Oh, right. Yes. OK. It's, this was written a week ago. A lot can change in a week. Sorry. Yes, check the timetable um, to get the exact times. The days are right. That, that's an achievement in itself. Um, so that's the work of the regulatory room. Um, uh, I think the, the question that comes to mind is, are we doing the right things? Um, is there uh, more we should be doing? Um, and, uh, um, but also seeing so many uh, faces here, uh, it's always interesting to hear what is happening in individual countries uh, and where they are on, on their own roadmap uh, uh, towards uh, regulatory, automated regulatory compliance and so on. So, um, I, really like to look around the room and see if anyone, uh, if anything that I've said, um, would they, they'd like to uh, comment or expand on. And 
you, you don't have to put your hand up. All you have to do is to press the red button. Hi, Brian Rasmussen. Uh, in, uh, I was wondering where you are on the sustainability aspect in the regulatory room, uh, because as 1st of January this year, the Danish government uh, has made it mandatory for all building permits to deliver uh, LCA uh, calculations, so life cost analysis. Well, um, uh, one uh, aspect of that is that the regulatory information requirements is starting to make lists of what information is needed to generate um, th th those kind of assessments. But we, we also have taken those issues to the Sustainability Action Group to say, uh, what can we do um, in a year to improve the role of Open BIM uh, in answering questions like that? Um, and I think the, uh, some of you will have uh, heard about the IDS initiative, uh, a new way of expressing requirements. And I think the, the, the big priority is to make sure that uh, uh, jurisdictions can express what it is that has to be presented or has to be in the model for people to generate the presentations that have to go in. So those are the two things that we're doing. Um, if, if, uh, if you'd like to contribute some of the lessons and, and, and needs of the Danish experience, then it would be really good if you'd join in um, and contribute it, because I, um, I, I certainly got the feeling this morning that uh, the French, the Danes, and the Finns seem to be in some kind of race to um, implement the EU directives in different forms and so on. And I think it's really interesting uh, that, the, that, that it's taking different timescales and different manifestations. So it would be really good to get that input. Good. So. Okay. Is there anything else we should be doing better? Or at all? Um, any, any thoughts on that? Um, yeah? Just maybe for, for some countries who want to, to start the same process, um, to know some uh, lessons learned from other countries, because I think that not only the technology is the um, most critical factor, probably the training for uh, supervisors from the municipalities. So uh, there are many barriers, probably, that could be nice to know uh, how countries as Finland, for example, or Japan are trying to, to fix, to solve, in order to, to take into account previously to to integrate that kind of building permit process? That's, that's a, a very good question. So I think we're starting with the guidance for regulators that we, we want to get make available to, to anyone um, a, a basic level of understanding. Uh, when we do the open houses, um, we have uh, various people um, join the call and uh, there were some uh, misunderstandings that we discovered. Um, uh, many people uh, on the regulatory side have assumed that they will have to purchase um, proprietary software. Uh, and and you know, one person was on the call saying, we're not buying the six top BIM authoring tools uh, just in case we get an application in that form and so on. So there's a message to get out there that, you know, that, um, that Open BIM uh, doesn't have to be costly. In fact, it, you know, a lot of the things that need to be done can be done for free. Um, and uh, that uh, you know, there are probably uh, more IFC viewers available freely than, um, than proprietary ones. Um, and, and so uh, the, um, the cost of starting um, doesn't have to be, be high. So there's some basic lessons that we have to get out there. Um, uh, and then, uh, you know, with the stepwise 
thing. I, you know, the document will need to say that the, if you're just going to use the IFC as background information to an application, that's okay. That's a good thing to do. Uh, then you just need a viewer. If you want to use it to manually help check things uh, like measurements or whatever, then that's okay. You just need a simple tool. And then, uh, of course, for automatic checking, um, th th then there's a whole set of questions that we'll need answering. Um, uh, do your regulations make sense? <laughs> um, uh, and and uh, uh, what are the exceptions and how do they apply and so on? So at the high end, there's a, a lot of lessons learned. Um, and, and a lot of regulators uh, currently sort of work on, on habit. And one of the most interesting things about automatic code compliance is you get regulators saying, I never understood what the regulation meant until we tried to automate it. Um, and, and so on. So yeah, there is a ladder that people will need to go through. And we, we want to get that first step, um, the, the ideas about that first step out there. But yeah, um, uh, we collect stories uh, and, and anecdotes. Um, unfortunately, we can't always share them widely, but the, the steering committee has access to a, an archive of country of uh, country specific reports and updates. So um, uh, we need permission if we're going to share them more widely, but we, we are doing that. Okay. Tell me. Um, I think the, the, uh, the the CO2 and, and in general, the environmental impact, uh, for some reason, it has kind of, a, it's been coming in a lot faster than expected in a way, although it's been there for ages. <laughs> uh, but um, at, at the same time, um, it's uh, we we've been talking about automated code checking for 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 a decade i guess or maybe even more uh and uh it's actually really really difficult thing to achieve because the regulations are the, the are, are so complex uh including lots of uh, exclusions and and stuff like that but then at the same time uh the calculation of for example the the carbon footprint of a building it's a lot easier, to be honest, in, in, uh, t technically. Uh, so probably that's, that's something that we should do in, in the regulatory room that kind of, uh, uh, in a way, it's uh, somehow, somehow, somehow I feel that it's in, a, in a between the rooms. So we have the building room and we have the regulatory room. Who is actually responsible for that? Because in here, in, in the regulatory room, we are kind of uh, looking the, the, the subject or the topic from the kind of from the building authority point of view, whereas the maybe the con, uh, building room is looking at the same thing from the kind of uh, industry point of view. But uh, I think that that's kind of a territory where we 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 could actually work together with other rooms, and we we actually uh, as a building smart. Uh, we could do, specify some rules because um, it's early days for the sustainability action group so I can't promise exactly what we're going to do um, but my suggestion is that uh, um, a lot of sustainability assessments depend on measurement of the proposal whether it's a bridge or an infrastructure project or whether it's a building and uh, one of the things that we might contribute fairly quickly is a, a minimum level of information that just makes BIM measurable and then some people will apply uh, cost rates to it some people will apply carbon rates to it some people will apply um, uh, water consumption rates uh, um, in you know some countries are uh, water is as critical a resource as energy. Um, so I think a, a basic uh, minimum set of information, which might have to do with every object should have a material and a volume, or a manufacturer and a model number, or who knows what, 
Um, but uh, a few things like that could make a big difference to say that there is a minimum level of information that you should have. And that even if it's at concept stage, it's that, that information should be there. Because we know that uh, of when you come to start building, um, the sustainability footprint is, is fixed. Uh, it's too late. Um, so I think uh, um, uh, I don't want to argue with other rooms, uh, and one of the reasons for, for setting up a sustainability action route was to draw on the expertise of, of several rooms uh, together to say um, this is a, a key message, whether it's regulatory or not. Um, uh, I know in the UK we don't have, apart from, well, energy consumption is regulated, um, but uh, the community is coming together to say we must assess sustainability anyway, even if we haven't got a regulatory obligation. And I think that's one of the, the things that we need to harness, that sometimes it's regulatory, sometimes it's voluntary, sometimes it's uh, organizations anticipating the risk that there might be regulation in the future. Um, I know in the city of London, uh, offices are being refurbished to a very to, uh, with minimum uh, wastage now uh, and maximum reuse of materials because the owners and the occupiers anticipate that there will be regulation in the next 10 years and so they're voluntarily taking a more sustainable path so that they will have assets that, that they can use uh, to reduce the risk uh, the, the penalty risk that might come um, in, in coming years. Um, and that, in turn, is putting a premium on sustainable buildings. So it's not only regulatory mechanisms that are coming into play. Um, I think um, society is starting to organize itself to answer some of these questions. OK. Any other thoughts? Well, I'm thinking about the, the, this journey towards uh, the digitalization of permitting. Yeah. It's obviously very hard in many countries because of the uh, many municipalities. In Sweden, we've got 300. I don't know other countries have many more, <laughs> larger countries. And there's a big hesitancy about, uh, about how to go, go, uh, come further with this uh, on the national level. Is the regulatory room looking into how uh, this can be supported by advice or any other way to, to, to kind of describe the process with its well common platforms and so on? Uh, uh, yes. Um, one of the uh, past projects that we've done uh, was to look at um, uh, we have open BIM standards for built solutions. Um, we have IFC uh, and so on. And we looked at whether there were um, solutions for uh, equivalent uh, solutions for open rules so that uh, we could reduce the amount of software development and share rules. So that even, I mean, in the USA, there are 3,000 counties and they can have different regulations. Um, Sweden, you said 300, um, uh, and these are big numbers, and so we have to find a way of making solutions scalable. And, and we, we did a report on the rules languages that were available at the time, um, and which, which ones were themselves scalable. Um, uh, I have a feeling that uh, direct programming is not scalable, it's, it's error prone, it's expensive, it's hard to check, and so on. So yes, we've, we've looked at that and said I, you know, that, that we need to explore low code or no code solutions so that if uh, a city wants to, have, or an area wants to have its own uh, regulations, and uh, for whatever reason, uh, their location, uh, in the USA, it was explained to me that if the county happened to have a uh, wood mill making plywood, 
then lo and behold, plywood be an acceptable building material in all circumstances for any purpose, um, <laughs> and so on. So whatever the motive is, um, yeah, I think I think we we need to make sure that we find the common as much commonality as we can, um, uh, so that solutions can be scaled. Um, uh, there are not going to be 300 or 3,000 bespoke software solutions. Um, we, we need to find different, different ways of solving that. Um, and of course, uh, regulations change uh, every three years. Uh, the lifetime of a, a section of the regulations is probably three to five years. Um, and so you have to have a, a system that can be dynamic and uh, respond to those changes. Um, uh, from, from what I've seen, uh, industry usually gets about six months' notice. And so you have to think about how can you in, uh, implement a, a new or a changed regulation in the same time scale as the industry has to adjust. Um, so there's a, a kind of deadline that unless you can uh, uh, capture a regulation within a few months, then the, otherwise the system will fall behind. Um, and I think that's one of the things that happened in Singapore, that we took four years to produce something and the regulations were already starting to change underneath the system. So yeah, that's really important. Okay. Um, any other thoughts or challenges? Oh, yeah, Tony? Yep. Uh, one, one more thing that uh, uh, at the end of the day, it's uh, the, the, the biggest point pain that we have is, uh, are the tools that we are using to, to design and, and to, to analyze things, it's mainly to design, I guess, uh, and uh, to, to have a better communication uh, with, with software vendors. I, I, that's, uh, that's kind of a, on, on top of my wish list, in a way, so that, uh, of course, when uh, uh, if Finland and when, since Finland made uh, IFC uh, mandatory starting from uh, January 25, uh, we are just a small country. Uh, I think that the, the big software vendors couldn't care less uh, if we have issues. But uh, if we have uh, 10 countries doing the same or uh, 20 countries doing the same, I guess that uh, the software vendors have to listen. And then uh, maybe uh, we have a better kind of, uh, yeah, I'm hoping that uh, these kind of initiatives will kind of help, uh, help uh, kind of, uh, or they, they will support the, the software vendors to implement things. And of course, uh, the, it, it will be a lot easier for the software vendors to implement if we kind of do similar requirements. If if twenty countries make different requirements, uh, uh, we are not going to uh, get there. We are. It's it's a chaos. But uh, yeah, that's that's how I feel. Yeah, and I think you know, um, most most countries have multiple jurisdictions, um, and we have to think in terms of solutions and approaches that uh, can be repeated from country to country, from uh, county to county or region or district or city to city. Um, and uh, that probably means thinking about uh, uh, codeless or no code or low code solutions um, because that should reduce the amount of validation. I think one of the things that we learned in Singapore um, and it was 20 years ago, um, and people weren't as understanding of technology uh, as perhaps they are now. Perhaps we trust it too much now, but uh, there was a lot of skepticism about what the Singapore system was doing and whether it was giving the right answers or could give the right answers or whether it was trustworthy or not. Um, and so we have to find ways to separate um, the, the uh, what we call technically a rule engine 
to separate that from the regulations that they're using that rule engine to execute. And that, that it, it's not easy, but I think it can be done. Uh, and I think it needs to be done um, because uh, um, there is, uh, uh, well, the regulatory system is in crisis in many countries. I can say that because uh, in England, we all know that it failed miserably. Um, and that does give a, a kind of urgency to thinking, is there a better way? Um, and, and I hope other countries don't have to go through what we've been through. Um, but I think the, 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 the worry there is that the, the manual regulatory process um, is prone to failure. Um, and uh, when those systems fail, they can fail catastrophically. So there's a kind of uh, um, ethical duty to try and find a better way as quickly as possible. That's the personal comment. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yes, my name is Edward Tischke from uh, Germany. I'm a lawyer. Um, and I wondered um, if, if Finland uh, could be a role model for other, at least for other European countries. And I wish it could. I think in, in Germany we would need 16 Finlands because we have 16 federal states and all have their authorities on uh, building permits. Um, but I wanted also, um, also working in, in, in the field of procurement law, uh, we have regulations in Germany to support small and medium-sized uh, enterprises. And uh, will that be a problem? Is that a problem in Finland that um, there are voices that say um, if you have um, IFC mandatory uh, building permits, uh, you might endanger uh, small and medium-sized enterprises because in the design uh, branch, uh, we have a lot of very small entities, uh, especially in Germany. Uh, yeah, uh, obviously that, a, that is going to be an issue uh, also in Finland, uh, the kind of the uh, the the strategy is to to the put the bar uh, a little bit higher than uh, what is achievable today. Uh, there will be lots of uh, crying and uh, arguing, but uh, but at, at the same time, uh, I feel that we should shouldn't put that so, so we we shouldn't be too ambitious with that so so that we kind of keep uh, be realistic that what can be achieved so um so that the the kind of the the idea is to put the bar a little bit higher than what is achievable today uh and then the the industry will survive from that after some cry but uh, uh but uh, at the moment uh, at, at the same time kind of uh there are, of course, different levels. We have uh, uh, big engineering and architectural offices who are more than ready for this. And then, of course, we have... Uh, it's not only uh, always about the size, because, uh, the, the, uh, uh, to my experience, the, the small companies can be really flexible, so actually they can be really kind of uh, agile in this. Um, I, I think it's more about uh, the company uh, culture. Um, uh, it's also about uh, small municipalities. They have maybe there's one person who is in charge of the building control. Uh, so one of the kind of uh, principles, uh, at least for me, uh, has been that uh, you actually you don't have to open the model at all in order to get the, the kind of the minimum information automatically from the model. So you get kind of, without knowing anything about BIM, you can still use the model-based data in, in, your, in your work. And then if you, so if that's kind of the minimum level. And then, of, of course, the, the three-dimensional model brings some advantages and benefits for the building controller if he or she is ready to learn a bit more. So, but yeah. Uh, it's a really delicate kind of a, uh, a line or, or uh, how far we can push this so that it's 
it's kind of a achievable, but at the same time, uh, kind of a enough ambition that uh, that we actually pu push. Because the the whole the biggest thing in here is not the regulatory processes. That is just a, that is just an engine, or that is just a tool how we actually push the whole industry forward. So it's not. Of, co of course, it looks like it's the, the regulatory process, but to be honest, the big thing is the, the kind of the industry process. So when we are setting up the regulatory rules uh, and harmonize and standardize the models, uh, we say that I, you need to deliver IFC and, and so on, and we also specify what is the content of the IFC. We are actually not just helping the uh, building uh, authorities, but we are actually helping the whole industry. Because then we are building up a, a certain level. Everybody can trust that, OK, if this building has, ha if, if it's got a, a building permit, we know that the quality of the data is already in, in some certain level. And then, uh, for example, contractors can use the same data for quantity takes or take offs or procurement or whatever. So that's the kind of uh, the the biggest kind of goal that we have. Yeah. I think uh, um, just going a little bit wider, uh, government uh, has three levers it can pull, can choose to pull if it wants to. Um, they can pass uh, basic legislation. Uh, I think Denmark has a, a basic IFC law that says that public projects of above a certain size or value should should be done using building modeling and using IFC. Yes? Yeah, that's correct yeah. since twenty ten. Yeah. So so that's that's one thing any any government can do. Um, there's uh, the example that we had in the UK, that we have in the UK that uh, the government is uh, responsible for about 17% uh, of the demand in industry. And so by acting as a client and saying, we want uh, uh, structured information, uh, unfortunately, the demand was not for IFC, but for COVID. Um, but uh, you know, they, they can act as a, a, a significant uh, client body uh, together. And then the third area that they can um, intervene is for uh, the regulatory process and uh, sometimes the the motives can be mixed um, uh, it, the, the UK government was very clear that uh, uh, they were generally disappointed by the construction sector and that they were going to use their influence as a large client to uh, put a, a shock through the industry um, because uh, um, the performance on a particular program of school building had been so varied. It was disappointing, but even more disappointing was the variation in costs and timing on the different schools that had been procured, that uh, they, they didn't mind sending a shockwave through the industry. Um, uh, and they gave the industry six years to decide if they wanted to work for the government or not. So it, a shock, but spread over six years. Um, so I, you know, there are the three the, the, there are those three levers, um, but um, the motivations can be varied, um, uh, as as we heard from uh, Masaki's uh, presentation. The, the desired outcome can be to influence uh, uh, quality of O and M. It can be to influence uh, sustainability goals. Um, it can um, generally uh, uh, it can be to uh, force uh, uh, the industry to lose the long tail of incompetent builders and designers and say, we only want those, we, we want the industry to be thinned down. Um, and, and this is a challenge that we can make to industry to say, either you can do this stuff or you can't do this stuff. Um, that's not an official line from the UK government, but 
uh, when you listen, you can you you could hear some of that thinking. So so yeah, there are many levers, many uh, activities. I think the uh, the other pressure is that as the regulatory system gets uh, more complex, uh, governments um, well. Clients will say, we don't want our project to be in jeopardy for three months, four months, six months, um, whilst the regulatory process is considered, or if it's a nuclear power station, 10 years. Um, uh, and so some client bodies are starting to say, we want a more efficient planning system, a more efficient uh, regulatory system. Uh, and, and, and when people see it working in... Estonia, when they see it working in Finland, uh, uh, Dubai, um, uh, and so on. I think suddenly client bodies will start to say, once they realize there's a better way, there will be demand from that side too. Okay. Uh, well, um, we've almost had our time. Um, if what you've heard is interesting, and you would like to be involved with the regulatory room. Uh, as I tried to be clear, we're, we're very open. We're always interested to hear people who want to be involved. Um, come forward, talk to us. Um, and come back uh, in uh, half an hour when we will talk about the regulatory information requirements and, and what impact that might have on the industry. So, three? I will come to the dinner, yes, where you'll find us being uh, very serious and uh, not laughing at all. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much.